Hey guys, and welcome to the video! Today's topic is Compliance Carbon Markets. By the end of this video, you're gonna know, first of all, what is Compliance Carbon Markets? Secondly, what are the two main types of trading systems and how do they work? And third, how big is it? Including size comparison with voluntary carbon markets. Guys, important note, the topic of carbon markets is highly related to things like Kyoto Protocol, the Paris Agreement, market mechanisms developed under Kyoto Protocol. And I have separate video on those things. So I recommend you to check it because then you will be much more comfortable with information in this video. Now let's start with the question number one. What is compliance carbon markets? Compliance carbon markets are marketplaces where emitters can obtain and surrender emission permits or carbon credits in order to meet their legally binding goals on greenhouse gas emissions. Compliance markets are strictly regulated and supervised by governmental bodies, and they appeared when countries got legal obligations to decrease their greenhouse gas emissions, or in other words, when Kyoto Protocol entered into force. As I mentioned in my video on climate agreements, Kyoto Protocol introduced three market mechanisms to help countries achieve their climate goals in the most cost-efficient way. Emissions trading, clean development mechanism, and joint implementation. And compliance carbon markets started as implementation of those mechanisms. And this brings us to the second question. What are the two main types of trading systems and how do they work? Emissions trading is done under so-called cap and trade system, where the unit traded is emission allowance, which is the permit to emit one ton of CO2 equivalent during a particular period of time. Mechanisms like CDM and joint implementation are baseline and credit systems. And the unit traded there is carbon credit, which is a tradable certificate that represents reduction of one metric ton of CO2 equivalent generated by a project designed specifically for this purpose. Now let's review how these two systems work. First one, cap and trade system. Under the Kyoto Protocol and now under the Paris Agreement, countries have their goals to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Or in other words, each country has a cap on greenhouse gas emissions. The cap decreases every year ensuring that total emissions fall. Emissions trading allows countries that have emissions unit to spare, emissions permitted them but not used, to sell this excess capacity to countries that are over the targets. In cap and trade system, the government sets a cap on emissions and issues a quantity of emission allowances in accordance with this cap. Emitters must hold allowances for every ton of greenhouse gas they emit. Emissions trading works not only on international level when allowances are traded between the countries. In some countries it also works on domestic level when emissions are traded between companies. Typically country-wide cap is then allocated to the main producing companies, which means that now the largest emitters also have the maximum amount of emissions that they can allow themselves. This allocation of emission allowances to the companies is typically done in two ways. The first one is just to give allowances for free, and the second one, more common one, is to sell allowances on auction. And the money country gets from those payments can then be spent on other measures to address climate change. That's the brief explanation on how cap and trade system works. Now let's dive into baseline and credit systems. The logic behind is the following. Every company has its particular business plan that is developed in accordance with their current business ambitions and existing restrictions, for example, legislation. If company continues their business as usual, according to this plan, then it's possible to calculate expected amount of greenhouse gas emissions that they're gonna produce. And this is gonna be the baseline of expected emissions in case of business as usual. But the company may decide to make an extra effort and go beyond their business as usual and reduce their emissions further for example, invest in new equipment producing less greenhouse gas emissions. It means that company now achieved extra emission reductions. An achieved emissions reduction can be converted into carbon credits and sold to other emitters who are failing to meet their emission reduction goals. And businesses not necessarily have to reduce their own greenhouse gas emissions below the business as usual plan. They can invest in other projects of other companies, help them reduce their emissions further and earn carbon credits at the return of this investment. 
To implement this logic into action, two major market mechanisms were introduced under the Kyoto Protocol. Clean development mechanism and joint implementation. I already talked in more details about those mechanisms in my video on climate agreements, but just to recap quickly. Clean development mechanism is about purchasing carbon credits by emitters from developed countries from carbon offsetting projects in developing countries. Joint implementation is about purchasing carbon credits by developed countries from developed countries as well. Very important thing to remember about baseline and credit systems is that to make sure that trading of carbon credits brings any real climate benefits, every single carbon credit traded has to be backed by emissions reductions, which are real, additional, verifiable and permanent. Real means that if carbon credit was issued, then somewhere in the world one metric ton of CO2 equivalent was either prevented from being emitted or was removed from the atmosphere. Additional means that without this mechanism, for example without CDM, this removal would not have happened. So this is extra effort, above business as usual. Verifiable means that you can track this removal back to a concrete activity, concrete project and check how it was done and by whom. Permanent means that this one metric ton of CO2 equivalent will not get back into the atmosphere. And of course, on top of all of that, carbon credit generating projects should not bring any negative impact on local communities. The set of compliance mechanisms belonging to the baseline and credit systems is keep changing and evolving. For example, now there is a separate mechanism for aviation industry, mechanism for generating carbon credits from agriculture and forestry projects, and the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, that is now still under discussion, will change the set of those mechanisms further. By the way, don't get confused if you're going to investigate the topic further and you're going to meet different naming for carbon credit, because different projects typically call carbon credits in different ways. For example, CDM carbon credits are called Certified Emission Reduction. Joint Implementation credits are called Emission Reduction Units. But in any case, just know that it's still the same physical substance, it's still carbon credit. The whole point of having compliance carbon markets and having this variety of mechanisms and trading systems is to allow emitters to have a choice and to be able to decrease emissions where it's easier or least costly to do so. And in theory, it looks good, but nevertheless, compliance carbon markets are still getting quite a lot of criticism. And this is the topic that I'm gonna cover in my next video. And now the question number three. How big is the compliance carbon market, including comparison with voluntary carbon markets? Voluntary carbon markets in total are somewhere in between 0.4 to 1 billion dollars, according to different sources. And compliance carbon markets are way much bigger so far, up to 270 billion dollars. Though voluntary carbon markets seem quite tiny in comparison, but forecasts say that they might grow exponentially in the nearest future. Now let's also summarize key learnings on compliance carbon markets. They appeared since 2005, after ratification of the Kyoto Protocol. Units traded are carbon credits and emission allowances. And remember, depending on concrete market where units are traded or depending on the mechanism they belong, they can be called differently. But there are still only two types of them. It's either carbon credits or emission allowances. The restrict regulation that is run by mandatory national, regional or international carbon reduction regime and buyers are large emitters who are required to reduce their emissions by low. And that's the key difference comparing to voluntary carbon markets. You don't just reduce emissions because you want to. You have to do it because you are required to do this by law. Since regulation is now more centralized, so the price range on compliance carbon markets is also smaller comparing to the voluntary ones. It's somewhere in between $15 and $50 per ton of CO2 equivalent. And there are several examples of compliance carbon markets. So, for today, that's gonna do it. My next video is gonna be about the main reasons for criticism of compliance carbon markets. But for now, this is it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye!